jQuery Mobile creates a nav bar to allow us to have an easy to place navigation bar, usually in the header or the footer of our page. Now the nav bar is easy to create. It's simply a div with a data dash role of nav bar. Inside of our div, we have an unordered list with list items. And inside of our list items, we have anchor tags that point to either internal or external links. The nav bar will automatically handle up to five links on one row. To create a new button, you simply add a new list item with the anchor tag. Save our document, switch to our browser, reload, and it automatically creates a fourth link. Now one thing to keep in mind is the nav bar is specific to each page, even if it's a virtual page. So if I click on page two, for example, you'll notice that page two only has three links. That's because it has its own nav bar that is separate from page one's nav bar. This allows us some flexibility, but it also means that we have to remember to update each nav bar if it's to be consistent across all of our pages. Now you might see that the link to is automatically highlighted. This can be easily done for our first page as well. For our first link, I'll simply add a new class. That'll be UI-BTN-Active. If I go back to our original page, you'll notice that the first link is now active and is now shown as being active because it has a class associated with it. And if I click on link two, you notice that the second link is now active, but this does not always work. So if I click on page one again, you'll notice that it does not have my active state attached to it. If I click on it again, it then appears. So generally, what we'll do is we'll control that with some JavaScript code. We won't show that at this point because we want to show what you can do with the nav bar without any coding at this time. And we're going to remove our class, but we're going to add a new data section. And this is the data dash icon. This allows us to apply an icon to any link. Now jQuery Mobile has quite a few icons predefined inside of its library and controlled via CSS. So here I've applied the home icon. You'll notice when we reload our page that we automatically get our home icon. However, as a best practice, you want to make sure that either all or none of your links have icons. As you can see that the icons will add some additional height by default to our links and we want to keep things consistent. Reload our page and you can notice that it has four new icons, one for each link that is inside our navigation bar. You can pick any icon that is part of jQuery mobile simply by calling its name data-icon equals, and then the icon's name. Now, by default, you notice that our icon is at the top of our button. It does not have to be, however. If we switch back to our text editor, inside of our div for our nav bar, we can add the data-icon pause, which is short for icon position. In this case, we'll pick bottom, for example. Switch back to our browser, reload, and notice our icons move from being on top of our text to the bottom. Likewise, we can change position to be either left, right, or its default of top. When we reload, you notice our icons move off to the appropriate side. By using the icon position on the nav bar, it means we don't have to put it on each individual link, so it just simplifies our process for us by only requiring us to write it one time. Now these pieces are kind of short, so we don't have a lot of scrolling in this instance. However, our nav bars by default will scroll with the movement of our mobile device if our page is too big for a single screen. However, we can use a data-position attribute 
for our nav bar and specify its value to be fixed, which will lock its position either at the top or the bottom of the page, depending upon if it's associated with the header or the footer. This can work, however, I have seen it crash several desktop browsers, so we may not want to use that if we can avoid it. Now, one question I do get periodically is, do I have to have text for my button? So real quick, we're going to remove one. You'll want to put a non-breaking space character to ensure that you have a link. This just makes it easier for jQuery Mobile to read. And you may notice that when I hover over my link, you do see the overstate just as if it had existed. You will also notice, however, that it's taking up the full amount of space at this time. Finally, you can also theme your navbar separate from your page if you want to. The easiest way is inside of our navbar, add a class. UI-body, then UI-body, dash, and the letter theme that you want to pick. So for example, if you want theme B, you pick UI-body-B. Add that as your second class to your nav bar. And when you reload, you notice that you have your theme here as such. If you remove UI-body and simply leave UI-body-B, as we did in this example, when you reload, the extra space that goes around the nav bar disappears, and instead, you see just your links but it maintains the theme associated with it. Your navbar will pick up your theme of the page. So if you specify data-theme on a page, your navbar will take up the associated theme for that page. Therefore, you don't have to style it separately. You can see this example here. One may be tempted to add a data-theme to our navbar. However, if we remove our class and apply the data-theme specifically to our navbar, as you see here, and then reload, you will notice that it does not pick up a theme. You have to use the classes associated instead of trying to use data-theme on the navbar. This actually provides a performance enhancement over the older way of doing it with previous versions of jQuery Mobile and therefore it's a little bit faster and easier both for construction and for the end user rendering on the mobile device. If you found this video tutorial helpful, please like and share it with others. If you want to keep up with other videos that are coming out, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook. That way you can get the most up-to-date information.